Hi guys, I'm Max and this is Sophie and welcome back to our van build. This week we are doing more electrics, it is blue boxes galore as we try and get our leisure side sorted at the front of the van. Yeah, let's go! So today I'm going to look at the installation of all of our blue Victron boxes, as well as all of our batteries. They're all just there, if you can't tell. That's why we both went <laughs> blue boxes. <laughs> Go look at mounting them all up and then do some calculations of all the cables and fuses we need to join them all together. And while he's doing that, I'm going to be painting our bed frame. Um, it's all just like raw wood at the moment. So we need to seal it all off and I'm probably going to need some ideas as to how we're going to finish the back of the bed off so i'm relying on you guys to help with that let's go so you will have seen last week that we actually had our bed in um so we could reach this cupboard up here to do our electrics uh, we've had to take it back out again because this obviously isn't finished so i'm going to be painting all this up and then we can finally fit our slats in permanently and yeah maybe unwrap the mattress So while Sophie is painting the bed frame, some of the wood at the back, I am starting to look at positioning our electrical boxes. I'm sure we've told some of you about this before, but I'm going to show you where we are roughly positioning all of this equipment. Under our driver's seat is our existing vehicle batteries, and it's two 12 volt batteries, wide in series, making 24 volts, which is what the van runs off of. We have four leisure batteries that are also 12 volt, and they're going to be wide in series parallel, making a total of 24 volts and we have 340 amp hours of power there. These two are actually already in position because um, me and Sophie put them there once and they were so heavy we didn't want to have to move them again. So the two of them will be sitting under that passenger seat box just there. We're going to look at a way of fixing them down in place to make sure they're nice and secure. And our multi plus is going to sit in this other section of the passenger seat box. And again we need to build a bit of a frame to hold that. And then the rest of our batteries, so these two here, are gonna go in this area just here and then on the back of this um kind of sofa chair bed bit in our van is where we're gonna mount some of our boxes so this is a nice 18 mil bit of ply it's nice and strong strong enough to hold these boxes that are gonna be on the back of here so our mppts and our dc to dc charger so i've just very roughly put our leisure batteries where they're going to be sighted we know the amount of space we have left on the back of this chair. We need to work out the best distribution of all of the different boxes onto it. So I'm going to go grab them and we'll have a look. And just so you know, my aim for today is to know exactly where all of the different units are going to be. So I can measure out all the cable runs and get the cable ordered this evening, as well as fuses and all that kind of stuff. So we can complete our system. looking all right so the thing we need help with is this area here we are wanting to sort of cover over our garage lights are going to sit on the back of whatever that thing is um, and light up the rest of the garage so we need some help deciding what to put on this frontage piece here um we were thinking maybe something like live wood or something with a, a cool design on so if you guys have any ideas whatsoever please drop them in the comments below because we need all the help. <laughs> so I've spent a bit of time sitting here and staring at this panel that we're going to attach everything to. Um, I've mocked up one thing, which is the only unit we don't have, which is our little maxi MIDI fuse box uh, distributor panel. Um, and I think I've just about worked out where to start attaching things to. 
So I'm going to, yeah, attach the back boxes to the back of here, and then we're going to start measuring some cable. Hope your ears are clean. They are. What are you doing? I am just um, securing all of these beautiful blue boxes onto the back of our seat unit, which is like our big electrical panel of awesomeness. <laughs> and once I finish attaching them all and working out the order where everything's going, I will potentially need a bit of a hand to work out some cable runs. If you're free. No, I'm paying. <laughs> once you've painted. Can't do maths, me. <laughs> I'll do the math, so you do the, you do the uh, assisting. <laughs> I can probably manage some assisting. Perfect. So now that we have the majority of these pretty blue boxes and fuse boxes on the back of this seat, we are going to mock up some string to measure some cable runs. So we have some string with a bit of tape on it every metre which we're going to pull through on those cable routes and work out what lengths we need. So now we've measured all our lengths, we know the how far away our components are to each other, we need to figure out the thickness or the gauge of our cable. So we're just using your general automotive cable. It comes in loads of different gauges and um, it can be a bit difficult to figure out which one you actually need for which components. Because over a period of cable or length of cable, the power or the voltage can actually drop. So if it's on a really long length of, of cable, by the time it gets to the end, the electricity has kind of run out of some oomph. You can mitigate or get rid of some of that voltage drop by increasing the gauge or the size of your cable. Now, you don't want to run your entire van in like huge chunky cable. That would be ridiculous, it'd be too heavy, and it'd be really, really expensive. So you need to do a calculation that's going to help you figure out the perfect size that you need for your cables. So each cable and each gauge can actually carry a certain amount of amperage. So our 0.5 mil can carry 11 amp, and our big chunky, it's not actually that chunky, is it? <laughs> but anyway, our 6 mil can carry 50 amps. You can see the difference between the gauges there. The reason these are rated to those amps is because if you have an appliance that's going to run at like 15 amps you and you use something like this which is only rated to 11 it will set on fire and burn your van down so this is important stuff it's really boring but we've got a few little tips to help you get this done in a slightly less mind-numbing way so every length of cable that you run needs a fuse to protect it so for example our 15 amp thing that we're powering, you're going to need to times that by about 1.25 um, and that's going to give you like 18 something or other. 18 fuses don't exist so you're going to round that up to 20 and you're going to need to run through a cable that is going to be able to take that power. So although it's 15, you're going to want to run it through a cable that's maybe 25 amp. However, we need to see if this 25 amp cable can, over the length that we need it, carry the voltage that we need to the end of the cable to our appliance. So there's so many little bits of numbers going on here. My brain doesn't comprehend them very well. So I'm gonna hand over to Max and he's gonna tell you about the calculations you need to do to figure out how long your cable has to be and how big it needs to be. So let's say for example that 15 amp device is how far away from our batteries? Five meters. Which makes sense because that's about the length of our van. So if on this online calculator, we put in our DC voltage, which is 24 volts, our amps draw, which is 15 volts, uh, 15 amps, sorry, and our circuit length, which is five meters, with our two mil cable, which is rated for 25 amps, that gives a voltage drop percentage of 5.88%, and you wanna be kind of around 3% or lower so that cable is not going to be big enough. What you can do really easily is then change the size up to the next cable that you have, which we have, we actually have a three mil, 
If I change that up to 3 mil, the voltage drops to 3.84%, which has gone green. So in this case, with this 15 amp device and that length of cable and that fuse, we'd need to use a three mil cable or bigger. So now we've worked our way down our list, looking at all our fuse sizes, unit sizes and cable lengths and worked out all the different gauges of cable we need to connect everything. We need some pretty girthy cable for our battery connections, which is 50 mil squared which covers up to 345 amps. We need some 25 mil square to connect our MultiPlus to our batteries, which covers 170 amps. So we've just put in an order for all of that stuff. We need to wait for it to arrive. However, for our MPPTs and DC to DC chargers, we can use our six mil cable, which is up to 50 amps, which is plenty, right here. And one final tip, just to check when he says sizing this cable, is to have a look at any of your appliances, like your MPPTs, and check what gauge cable the connectors can actually take, because that's gonna limit your size as well. Shall we actually run some wiring? Sounds good. Delivery for Sophie. You got mail. What have you got? Hi, Sophie and Max. I've added a little something extra. Have one for me. Thanks, Kev. Mini surfboards. I have a sneaking suspicion. I don't know what this is. So one of our awesome Instagram followers, Kev, big up Kev, from Mini Surfboards, he asked for a photo of the front of our van. So, I was expecting this, which is a very, very cute mini surfboard. And it's gonna go perfectly in our cab with my dream catcher. But I did not expect this. Oh my goodness. Look at that. <laughs> That's so sweet of him. It's amazing. He's got the pretty shitty van van down perfectly. She doesn't look so shitty in this, does she? <laughs> what a nice guy. Well, I guess we need to figure out where we're going to put that. Have a nice beer. Ooh. Oh, it says Max and Sophie on the back. Look. Oh, we should get that hung straight away. Yeah, let's get it up in the van. Priorities, eh? This is... <laughs> we're supposed to be doing electric. <laughs> Good job we finished the head unit, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I can't see what's going on at the back. What's going on at the back? Help! There's wires and stuff I didn't see. Can't see what I'm doing. <sighs> nice! Yay, the cab looks nice and homely now. <laughs> Happy? Happy. Massive thank you, Kev. While we're waiting for some equipment to arrive, I need to work out the best way to fix our batteries down in place in our van. These metal banding straps should be sufficient to hold the batteries down in place and stop them sliding around or anything like that. And I am bolting them into those existing bolt holes and then we'll attach them into the back of this seat once the batteries are in. So they'll strap all the way around it and keep them securely in place. So that is our banding attached so the batteries will slide in there and then that will go over the top of the battery well away from any of the uh, terminals on it and then we're going to screw in at this point here which matches up uh, through our 18 mil ply and into our 2x2 two two timber on the back side so that'll stop them in the worst case that we flipped the van over or anything horrific like that that'll stop them uh, flying all over the place they're pretty trapped in here anyway but just an extra bit of band. So second coat is done. We are going to tidy back up the cables. So I've got to run some extra wires that Max has put in and then cable tie everything together. Okay, so now we have our wires running where they need to be. We've used these little cable tie saddles which have been 
amazing. I highly recommend <laughs> if you're doing a van build or any build where you're running wires, buy these cable tie saddles. They're so useful. Um, so we've got those running over there. I've also re-cable tied up our airline um, because we had to take that apart for painting as well. So yeah, it's looking much neater now. Do you just give me a sec? No, I'm filming you right this second. Sometimes I tolerate you. And other times? I tolerate you without showing it on the outside. <laughs> so why are we being slow? Huh? Why are we being so slow? I'm not answering. <laughs> so my really nice little neat Maxi and MIDI fuse holders arrived. Ooh. I'm just ah. gonna go <laughs> about there on my board of many, many things. Um, we've also had our smaller gauge cable arrive, so I can wire up our MPPTs and DC to DC chargers today, I think. We're still waiting on our battery cable. I don't think it's going to arrive this week, which is a bit of a pain, so I wanted to get all that done for you guys to see. But that's probably going to be next week now. Um, but that's all the cable to join our batteries together and our multi-plus and all those kind of things. And why have you been spending so much time on eBay? Oh, because I... I originally was going to buy battery cables that were kind of pre-made up, so you like measure to the millimeter of what you want and what size uh, crimps you want on the end, but it turns out that's not as cheap as I thought it was, so I'm looking at buying a crimper for our 50 mil battery cable so I can put ends on it myself, which I've never done before, mm. so I'm going to have to buy one now. We've also been looking at eBay to try and find like a second hand one, again, trying to keep the price down. But they tend to go well, for basically the same price as a new one, and then you've got to pay for postage or packaging. So. Why would you want to sell one? You buy one and it works, so not yeah. many people are selling them either. So yeah. More money. More money, I guess it's a new one then. <laughs> so we are going to get this fuse holder mounted on our board, and then start running some of the cables that we have for the MPPTs and for the DC to DC charger. We just have to spend a little bit of time working out the best position of that, but that's now in. Um, so the maxi, the power from the batteries is going to come up and hit this maxi fuse first, which is going to output down to the multi plus. This top MIDI fuse is going to go to our smart battery protect and then up to our fuse boxes and voltage droppers. The middle two are going to go over to our two MPPTs, and then our final one is going to go down to our DC to DC charger. That's a nice way of neatly distributing all our power. So I'm going to look at running some of these initial battery cables up to it now. I think it does a really neat job rather than doing a combination of bus bars and fuses. It just kind of does everything all in one. So I'm really happy with that. Also comes with this super neat little case, which obviously once all the fuses and everything are on, you can throw on and it protects it all. Look how neat that is. My next job is going to be insulating our cupboards. Now, a lot of you know that our floor is not getting insulated. We unfortunately don't have the height to spare. So we're hoping that some underlay and the wooden floor, and then obviously the phenolic ply underneath is gonna be enough insulation for us. But what we are gonna do is insulate the heck out of our cupboards, just so we can hold on to as much heat as possible when we're in cold places. So yeah, I need to clear out some of these cupboards and then start cutting some Celotex. We'll have toasty bums now. Seats are insulated. So I've come up against another problem, which is that I don't have the right size connectors to connect to the MIDI fuse holder. Um, I have a bit of a selection of these little heat shrink connectors we have been using. 
and none of them are the right size, which is just my luck. Um, so what I've done instead is made a bit of a list, rather than rather than keep coming up against these problems where I've not thought of something or missed something, um, I've made a list of all of the different components that we still need. So now I've sat and worked out all that list, I'm going to have a bit of a think about what I can do. So I have now finished my insulating on the other side of the van. I've got the sort of little step area where our heat is coming out in our bathroom. And I've also done over here in the kitchen area. Um, and you can start to see how it might look because we've plied bottom to that one over there. So yeah, odd job Sophie. So the next level of electricity is cardboard electrics. <laughs> wow. <laughs> these are going to generate um, all the power for all our van, these two little squares of cardboard. No batteries <laughs> needed. Um, it all generates from here and it's the new, it's the future, man. Yeah, we, we've solved the world's problems here. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it's come down to when you're trying to do stuff and you don't have the correct components yet. Oh, wow. Well. We're nearly there. So we are going to have to leave it there for this week as we have all of those new components and cables and bits on order but we can't wait for them all to arrive so we can show you the rest of our system and get it up and running. Your turn. <laughs> I hope they all turn up <laughs> sooner rather than later. Um, please remember if you've got any ideas for the back of our van um, by the bed please drop them in the comments below because I want something really awesome and I haven't quite figured out what that is yet. If you are new around here please subscribe so you don't miss a week and um, smashing that thumbs up button is always the loveliest thing you can do for us so we'll see you next week bye, bye.